Time now for the business news with Nicholas Poynton, who's joined me in the studio. Nicholas, so Sky and Spark, they've announced some kind of new sports partnership. I mean, how's that going to work? Because yeah. aren't they competitors? Yeah, that, that's precisely the question, right? So, well, Sky, they're going to share its streaming content with Spark this summer. It's all part of this new uh, commercial agreement. I think sort of a content sharing agreement when I look at this. But unusually in this example, it won't cut both ways. So the new partnership, it means Spark will be, will be able to offer Sky's sport uh, streaming content to its customers that will be bundled together with the current service it provides, that's uh, Spark Sport. And however though, Sky, they're not going to be receiving anything from Spark in terms of content for now. It, uh, the company was very tight-lipped when I put questions to them about this today, saying that it's had, it's had conversations with uh, uh, Spark about this, but it's, it's got nothing to announce at, at, at the moment. Sky says this new partnership it is in line with its current strategy to really get its content and in front of as many eyeballs as possible, uh, whatever whatever mode of delivery be that you know uh, free to air content or uh, via streaming services, which is you know that is really why a lot of companies agree to these sorts of sharing deals in the first place. It's all about exposure, and for Sky, that's really what it's about. It's about lifting the profile of sport. One where they used as they talked about growing the pie of sport, you know, really in, in broadening its appeal to customers, and also give them an ability to sort of learn more about how the market reacts to this product you know what does it say about you know sports streaming versus watching it with a set top box the actual terms of the deal that remains confidential but a spokesperson a spokesperson from spark told me this bundled deal would only be offered to monthly broadband and pay monthly mobile customers so Spark is really taking that very much that walled garden approach. You have to be loyal to the company, you have to already be within it, locked into some sort of monthly subscription to be able to sort of capitalise on this new streaming service. This is an initial agreement though, it will run for about six months and I've been told that there is a possibility that it could be extended sometime in the future, but this is a really ex uh, exciting space so we'll have to just wait and see what happens here. Well sports fans will be keen to know what exactly they're streaming because obviously with the pandemic and the lack of kind of international competition that's going to be a big question of what they're actually getting well, as well. Yeah, I think well, one of the one of the big attractions for Spark Sport is the fact that it's offering cricket, has rights to Formula One, you know, uh, there's all, plan all plans are going ahead for cricket to resume this summer. Formula One, they've managed to reignite its season, it's been going, it's now towards the tail end, so there are some products there on offer that uh, I'm sure, you know, Sky Sports subscribers may be pretty keen on. Now tell us about this Littleton property development which is kind of being touted as a model for community involvement financially and socially, what, what's it all about? Yeah this is quite an, ambit an ambitious project to uh, build apartments and retail office, office spaces here in Christchurch and instead of tapping, it, tapping the traditional group of people you would go to to raise money for a property development, that's you know property developers or institutional investors its directors took an unusual step to raise some of the money through crowdfunding and it's believed to be the first of its kind for a property development. In total, this is a $14 million project, but it's already raised about $840,000 from 250 shareholders, and the group say they are well on well on the way to reach its target of one point four million dollars raised through crowdfunding. So one of the one of the directors, Raf Manji, people probably know him as a former Christchurch City Councillor, says what is really nice about this is that it's given local people a way to invest in their community and also have a bit of a say in what it will look like. So lo these local community investors will have some input on the design. But I think what local investors will really like about this is the fact that they will be able to have some sort of say over what type of businesses they want to be seen in and amongst their community. You know, a, a, a sore point we often see with local communities and stores is around around liquor stores when they apply for a license for uh, for a new license in an area. There's usually an uproar. So look, this really gives affords a luxury to these local uh, the members of the local community to have a say in what they want their community to look like. And in this way, this crowdfunding approach has really seen as a way of democratising investment and it's an exciting project we we'll hope to see more things like this and hopefully we'll see a bit of variation in sort of the forms they take in the future and what can you tell us about the markets today? Yeah, big day on the markets. The NZX was is down, way down actually, about by about 1.7% or 218 points to 12,252. This happened as Asian stock markets fell. This was because soaring global coronavirus cases. And also we've seen slow progress uh, from the US in terms of this big stimulus deal. And that really put some downward pressure there on investor sentiment. Our own dollar though, it's sitting at 66.9 US 
US cents, 93.8 Australian, 51.3 British pence and gold. It's been a bit boring lately, it's sitting at 1,907 US dollars an ounce and it's up about $5 for the day. Thanks Nicholas. Nicholas Poynton with Business News there.